What's going on, y'all? So listen. Yo. <laughs> okay, first of all, I'm sad that this is the season finale of Insecure Season 2. But I'm also glad that we're getting a third season. I don't know how long it's going to take. You know, hopefully it's a little bit earlier than we expect. But either way, I got to be happy about that. I just hope they give them more episodes at the at also, all right? You know, ain't no power no more. Ain't no Game of Thrones no more. Bitch, when the Real Housewives coming back so I can have something to watch, okay? But anyway, Insecure season finale. It's called Hella Perspective. And I'm going to say that at first I was sitting here like, bitch, what? Why we need to know 30 days into Lawrence, okay? I said, what? what's going on with this? We don't need to know this. Why we got to focus all this stuff on here? But to me, one of the reigning things throughout this whole season and was made sure and shown so much on this episode was about gentrification. I love this show so much for the fact that it's not, it's, a, it's fictional characters, but they deal with real issues that are going on right now. They incorporate social media life, okay? We hear them talking about the shade room. We hear them talking about black Twitter and all this other stuff that goes on on social media. And we hear them talking about the entertainment and stuff like that. And also, you know, they're dealing with, the, uh, you know, um, racism and prejudices and things of that matter. Social matters and economic matters. And one of the main matters that kept popping up in the past couple of episodes is gentrification. Child, when the episode opens up, remember when they were sitting down at the dinner table um, with Tiffany at Derek's party last week, they was having a discussion about how it's a pink berry where there used to be a Popeye's in, um, you know, East Inglewood and neighborhood. Now we see when the episode opens up, Issa walking down the street. I think she eating a pink berry or some type of yoga shit. And she's just noticing that a lot of the family-owned businesses that used to be there for a while are no longer there. They either closed down or other people are moving stuff in. And then we see her across the street and this lady asking, do you want to try this cold beverage brew or some shit like that? And she was like, no, but what happened to the store that was right here? You know, what happened to the family-owned? Old girl was like, white lady too. I don't know, but you know, they're making a whole promulgate up here. Okay, they blind up the whole block and they're going to just fix this whole stuff up. Gentrification is coming, all right? And it's already hitting. She said, well, just make sure you come back and you see us in 30 days when we open. I said, well, damn. That also happened again when we seen um, Issa get that paper. We saw the news note, no, um, not news, noise notices um, earlier in the season. Then last week, the fuck, this cord, that's what it is. What is this? Hmm. Anyway, I'm sorry. That was rude. I thought that was somebody important. It really wasn't. Um... <laughs> We saw the notice that the rent was going up. Bitch, if y'all listen to Insecurity, the podcast that comes on every Tuesday, um, Crystal from the Read and then Hey Friend Hey from um, you know, YouTube and uh the Friend Zone podcast, they recap each episode and they do such a fucking good job. They be pointing out shit. After I do my review, I be sitting here like Bitch, yup, I see what you're talking about. I see what you're talking about. And on that podcast, they was talking about how the white folks are about to start moving the fuck in. They are about to start moving in. And sure enough, we saw that on this episode. And when Fran said that shit about how her rent was going up by $400, I said, bitch, what the fuck move? Okay, I ain't got, who got $400 to just pull out their ass like that? $400 extra dollars, girl. I mean, y'all doing it so you probably can, but that's still too fucking much. But anyway, we see Issa get that rent notice. It's going up. New management. All this stuff. Gentrification. Like I said, later on in the episode when Issa came back there um, into the dunes, we noticed also that the project... I'm going to call it a project because that's what it looked like. Any and everybody was in there and it was mostly black folks that was in there. We never saw anybody else of any other nationality in there. We saw the old lady. We didn't see her. We heard her. The old lady was in her apartment talking about Isha and her ashy ankles, okay? Then we see, um, you know, 
Thug Yoda. We see the little college boy, Eddie. We see Issa. That's all we saw was black faces, okay? The Dunes, if you notice, the Dunes, because at first I was like, is she going from one Dunes apartment building to another? No, it got a facelift. New management came in and turned that green dune sign to blue. And not just any blue, sky baby blue. I said, oh. And then when she go through that gate, who do we see? Getting out the pool and the pool all nice and lovely. But it never was like that. Remember, go back to when Eddie was sitting outside. Wasn't nobody fucking with that pool. That gate was closed. The gate was fucked up. Now all of a sudden, we see two white boys. Like they in a condominium type of shit. With they towels around them. like. Hey, Brad, <laughs> nice to see you. You like it? You like it with the beach chairs and everything? I'm sitting here like, see? See? Gentrification like a motherfucker. The white people moving in. But um, rent goes up, white people come in. Hey, that's what it do. And we've seen that happen in a lot of freaking areas. And it's happening around my area. It's happening around some other people areas that I know. You know, it's just, it's unfortunate. It really is. It's an unfair thing. Because they know, they're just trying to push us out. They know some of the people can't afford that shit. But anyway, I just had to point that out right quick. That was one of the things, one of the lessons or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so, they broke it up because the three main characters in this show is Issa, Molly, and Lawrence. So, they broke it up, okay, into three parts. And then they combined it at the end. The first thing we see... 30 days with Lawrence. I said, what the fuck? I really did get in my feelings like, why are we, I know we're not finna focus on and look at his perspective because it is not that I don't like Lawrence. And somebody had to say, I don't know why y'all, you know, y'all just love to hate Lawrence or whatever. And yeah, if, if Lawrence would have did what Issa did, y'all would have been coming down on him or whatever, but y'all try to hold her up just because she cheated. Don't nobody try to call her out. Listen, Issa fucked this shit up. Issa started this shit. Lawrence, Yes, he was in a slump. He was depressed. He wasn't doing nothing with his life, all right? He was trying a little bit that we saw just a little tiny bit, but he was in a slump, and Issa could have been there a little bit more. But then again, we don't know exactly what was going on in that relationship before we saw it at this point. So it still is not a reason for one to cheat on their mate. You're supposed to have communication, talk to him, help him out or whatever. And sometimes it just felt like Lawrence wanted to be led by the hand. But also it felt like Lawrence wanted to have that support system, okay, that Tasha was giving him, that encouragement. And then also we saw the same thing that, you know, that Issa wasn't really doing, you know, saying that you can do this, baby, you can do this. Sometimes niggas just need a little pick-me-up. Y'all know niggas is like little kids sometimes i don't even fuck with niggas and i know that okay y'all they can't do shit without a bitch telling them what to do sometimes that's some some of y'all y'all know that some of y'all sitting there like use a lying ass bitch knowing damn well you and your head like i'm finna call my mama you know so you know that's what it is that's what it is they want their girls to be their mama okay and a lot of these women are not finna do that shit right about now all right so get your shit together and go ahead but they could have talked Issa cheated and that wasn't right I'm not mad that Lawrence broke up with her, okay? I'm not mad that Lawrence went with Tasha or whatever because technically they was broken up. I'm just over the fact that the way that they both are handling the situation. And I'm glad they had some sort of closure at the end, you know, something that they should have been had, okay? Before they went through all this bullshit. But sometimes you got to go through the pain to get to, you know, I guess the sunshine and all that shit. I guess. Fuck that. But um, anyway... We see him with his relationship with Aparna. They going to, um, it starts off with them at the marathon, you know, and him and his coworkers are out there. They're running. He see Issa and Molly on the sideline. Then he taking Aparna out. He see her, um, I think he see Molly out there at a, um, restaurant that he's at. And, you know, it's just like everywhere he goes at this point, he keeps seeing reminders, and at first I thought he was, like, hallucinating or dreaming, daydreaming or something, but they were really in these places. Everywhere he went, to a certain extent, he either saw Issa or he saw Molly or whoever, you know? And then the things that he was dealing with with Aparna, like, bitch, he got this bitch up in the house. You know, Aparna is in the car talking about some, <laughs> how the fuck you gonna buy a speaker, Okay, instead of a fucking couch. You got to prioritize, bruh. Okay, come on. I said, this nigga is in this house. You got a new fucking place and you still ain't got no furniture like that. Bruh, 
what the fuck is your priorities, okay? What is going on? But, um, anyway, that happens. And the whole thing with Lauren's relationship with Aparna, it's almost as if Aparna was about to be what Tasha could have been. It's like Tasha 2.0, but what Tasha didn't make it to. Tasha never made it inside of Lauren's place, okay? Because Lawrence got his new place and then Tasha broke up with him, all right? But Aparna came on in. He cooking for her. They finna fuck on the counter and all this stuff. They going out on dates and shit. And I'm like, oh, okay, so y'all a real thing right now. At least y'all trying. Then here comes, um, you know, Aparna. She's going out. Or she was talking about a co-worker that she had sex with. And Lawrence found out that it was more than once. And she's still in communication with him, of course, because it's a co-worker. Oh, he's funny. He's this. He's that. So, of course, he can't take that. It's bothering him. And I said, what it seemed like is you got a good thing, somewhat of a good thing going with a partner right now. And you finna fuck it up just like my um um used to be fucking shit up before he'd even get popped off. Okay? I'm just sitting here like, so y'all really deserve each other. You and Issa, y'all deserve each other because y'all like to fuck shit up. It's like shit don't ever get right unless it's them two together. I don't know what. Do I feel that? Am I the only one that see that shit? But anyway, he go and tell um, Derek and um, um, Chad. Ch they was helping him put the uh, TV up. Here go, Chad. I would have got a 75 inch, but you know, that's just me. You know, all this stuff. So you still with that girl? Jasmine, I said, bitch, I caught it right then and there. Aparna is what, Indian or, you know, of that descent, uh, Middle Eastern or whatever. Bitch, Jasmine, Aladdin. I said, child, Chad, you have to stop. You have to fucking stop. They all sitting there about to watch Due North, okay? And, you know, Derek was like, yeah, Tiffany over there with Issa about to watch the show too. And, um, you know, he was like, my bad, my bad. Then this conversation come up talking about what's going on with him and Aparna and how she's still cool with the co-worker and they fucked a few times. And he was like, you need to nip that shit in the bud. Here go Derek talking about stuff. Well, there was some dude or whatever that liked Tiffany. He didn't work there no more. I said, oh, what you do, Derek? I just can't see Derek doing shit. He said, the nigga don't work there no more, dude. I said, what you do? You called it light on his ass or some shit? Girl, get out of here, Derek. But whatever. And, you know, you got Derek and um Chad bigging him up like, yeah, you need to nip that in the bud and all that stuff. So, of course, he going to try to do something with that. Then on the way to the movie theaters, she on her phone. He's so insecure in his feelings. And, you know, I guess it's the PTSD, you know, from the break breakup and being cheated on or whatever. So now he's thinking that, because he hasn't had closure yet. So he's going to think that everybody is cheating on him or everybody's trying to fuck him over or whatever. So he snaps off on the partner thinking that she on her phone because she was, he was talking, but she really wasn't listening because she was looking at her phone and he automatically assumed that she was looking at something that was dealing with Colin, who is, you know, her, um, the dude that she slept with multiple times, you know, that the one that she said was funny and nice or whatever at the uh, job, but she made it clear that, Nothing happened. She was just trying to be honest with him, I felt like. And I really believed her when she said it wasn't nothing other than that, you know. She ain't fucking with him like that no more. But if he would have came to her in a reasonable way and been like, I feel a little bit uncomfortable with that, she probably would have appeased him and said, you know what, I cut down on that. But the way that he came at her, he automatically assumed that's who she was talking to. But in reality, it was her sister, you know, showing a video of her little niece and all that stuff. And he snapped on her. She was like, you know what? Let me get up out of here. Pull over. He said, no. She got the fuck up out the car. I said, damn, Lawrence. You fucked that shit up, bitch, didn't you? Moving on, then we see Lawrence pull up, and he's going into the dunes, okay, to his old apartment. Um, <clears throat> Mind you, when they was in the car arguing, <laughs> Issa called his phone, and she gonna, um, a partner gonna say, and there go your pile of shit right there. I said, girl, hold the fuck up. <laughs> I got real in my feelings like, girl, you know what, Aparna, I like you. You know you a PLC too, okay, bitch? But um, you better bag that shit up, okay? Aparna sounds like she ready to go to sleep all the time. Or she be trying so hard not to speak abonics, you know what I'm saying? Like, like she just want to say nigga or some shit. Like, she just sound, her voice just sounds so sleepy and so tired. I don't know what it is. Like, so laid back. But anyway, it, it, it'll put you to sleep. That's what it was. It'll put, it's like chamomile tea. It just with some um Theraflu. Anyway, Molly. 
this bitch. You know, Molly... Molly tries it. Molly is probably one of... You know, everybody on this show is fucked up. Everybody is fucked up. But I think Molly is like the most fucked up person on here. Okay? I really do. And she just don't see it. And if she do see it, she just... She got to figure it out herself and Jen just, uh, it's just so dumb. It's just so, because it's a lot of people that are like this. They think they have everything together, but they really don't. And when people try to tell them, they get in their feelings and then they look at it and be like, yeah, you right. And still go back and do the same thing over and over and over again and wonder why shit don't work for them. Okay. So, um, 30 days with Molly, we go start back at the marathon. She's on the sideline. The reason why her and Issa are there is because they're cheering on, um, what's that girl name? Kelly. Because Kelly's supposed to be work, um, um, doing the little marathon too. They trying to figure out where she at. They cracking jokes with one another. It was cute little banter and all that stuff. Um, this is when, I guess, Molly mentions the stuff about Quentin coming into town and how she's going to, um, because they was, and once again, that steady flow of gentrification comes up. Because they was talking about other restaurants that used to be up that's not there. That was closed down. And that was opened up in other places. And then this one was closed down and all this stuff. And so, um, she was like, I'm going to take him out, you know. And the way that she was saying it was almost like, I ain't trying to go there with him. But, you know, I'm going to just try to make it real casual. Okay. They get a text from, um, you know, Kelly saying, hey, meet me at the finish line. I'm already at the finish line. So... We see, fast forward, Molly and um, Quinn out, and they having a little, nice little dinner or whatever, making little jokes that, you know, pe uh, uh, black folks will get, okay, about the check and all this stuff, and about how Molly about to go out there, and um, she's going on different interviews with black firms, you know, black law firms, and um, they're really impressed by the things that she's saying, she's hitting the mark, they, they want her, they're considering her, you know, I think she met with like two of them. One or two of them. Either way, it was enough to, you know, spike some comfort, um, some some interest. You know what I'm saying? So they talking about that. Quitting putting it down that, you know, maybe when you come back to L.A., you know, <laughs> we can talk and I could take you out on another date or whatever. He thinking this is like something more. Molly thinking like, no, this is just food, okay? But, you know, um, she goes back to work. And this is probably one of the most fucked up parts of the episode with Molly. Because Molly gets to work, has a meeting, and we thinking that they about to... I swear to God, last week I was like, oh, bitch, they finna offer her some more money so they can try to give her an insensitive, insensitive, insensitive to stay and all that stuff. Girl, no. So, Molly, we heard that you've been looking elsewhere for um, work at other firms and stuff like that. So, we started, we decided to give you the super co-worker award or some shit like that. Gave her a folder, opened it up, and it's a goddamn certificate with a fucking gold star or whatever the fuck it was on there. I said, bitch, are we in the third fucking grade? Okay, you giving out gold stars and shit like that because I did this right. I brought in my homework. I paid attention. I got perfect attendance, so I get a certificate, bitch. I'm on the A honor roll, so I get a fucking certificate. I said, Molly, leave their asses. If that's not even the incentive and the push that you need to fucking go, go. Okay, they couldn't even bump your shit up $50, bitch. They gave you a fucking sheet of paper with company ink on it. That look like a phone that they got off of fucking Microsoft Word office or some shit, bitch. I said, that is fucked up. All right. So, you know, she goes back. She's with Quentin. Um, and before this, she's talking to her therapist. She's back with the therapist. And I was sitting here like the whole time. So you didn't tell her about Dro, huh? Because it never comes up. And then, you know, she's telling her about the job and telling her about all this stuff. And she was like, but I should have did. And remember, the doctor always said, you're always thinking about what you should get and what this should happen. It was like, quit thinking of the should and think about the could, okay? You need to go outside. Why shouldn't you? Why couldn't you go with this person? Why couldn't this happen, okay? You don't go with what you should, you think should happen. Think about what could happen. 
And this is when, you know, she was talking to, you know, Molly uh, had already showed Issa the picture of Quint. <laughs> she was like, oh, okay, beer gang, beer gang. And, you know, she's talking with Quint. They're drinking. And I guess from what she took from that therapist is like, go to the opposite of what you know. You know, don't go for what you already know. This man is a decent man. If he's, he's not really your type, but... Other than that, he's a nice human being. So what Molly do? Take his drink out the hand and proceeds to kiss him. And, you know, they proceeds to fuck. She proceeds to ride the shit out of him. I see she got a little real the ride of his goddamn life. And I was just sitting here like, damn, Molly. Like, it just didn't sit well with me. Because I just knew that she was fucking around with him. Because during the therapy session, she gets a text from fucking Dro. Okay, he talking about some, I miss you. And you know she read it in his voice. Deep ass voice. See, that's what gets these bitches. Because, you know, Dro ain't cute like that. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Dro is not cute to me, okay, at all. All right, every light-skinned motherfucker is not cute. You know, his teeth is one thing, and it's just something about, he's so fucking lanky. Like, he, I don't know, I don't know. I just don't see it. But when he opened up his mouth, that's when you kind of get hooked in. And he, she read that text in his voice. I miss you. I was like, bitch, I would have fell for it too a little bit, but then I would have said, skirt, you know, no, she got a wife, okay? Candace, I don't think Candace know. I don't think Candace know. But they supposed to be going over there to watch Do North, you know, Kelly, Issa, and um, Molly and Tiffany. But Tiffany calls Kelly and say, look, girl, I ain't going to be able to make it. Mind you, Derek was like, she over there with Issa looking at Dude North, too. I said, huh, so why we ain't there, Miss Tiffany? What you out here doing? Okay? Next thing you know, um, we see Issa's side of the things. Issa, um, <clears throat> Issa decides that she gonna move, you know, when they was at the little, um, marathon thing we find out what happened to kelly kelly was at the finish line because her period started and then at the same time she said bitch it just flooded it just flooded she was like i was gonna keep going but bitch i just couldn't she was sitting at that finish line for a whole hour and they was all talking about how they didn't even know that she was really training for this goddamn marathon but okay tiffany popped up too and you know Derek was there and then we find out that tiffany is pregnant we were like wait a minute bitch what and i said <laughs> I hate to, you know, we watch so many shows and, and stuff don't really be what they saying that we can't just go ahead and accept the fact that, hey, a bitch pregnant by her husband. Tiffany is sneaky to me. Tiffany is sneaky to me and they didn't have some issues in their marriage. So I really hope that the baby is Derek. You know, they said it was on that night when they was high as fuck up in the house at Issa house when they had Blumpany up in there. All right. Is this choreography? What is this? Did they choreograph this? You know, that night. Uh-huh. You know, so I was like, all right, we're going to see about this, okay? The high yellow baby don't come next year, we're going to be no something. Um, unless them jeans skipped, okay? But, uh, you know, so then they're going around the line. It's like, oh, Kelly, you getting your fitness on, all right? Look at you in your Ivy Park. Molly, you doing all this stuff with the law firms and all this stuff. And Issa, you doing something. It's at the tip of my tongue, but I just don't know. And then it's when Issa bursts out that she's about to move, all right? And at first she really wasn't, but then she was like, okay, yeah. And they was over there trying to help her, you know, packing stuff. And was like, how you going to move? Where you going to move to? You can't afford it and all this shit. You need a roommate. You need this. And I was like, baby, you need to sell all your shit, basically. She's having this yard sale in the front. And Thug Yoda comes over there <laughs> with his daughter. It was like, how much for this Brock pot? <laughs> it was like, baby, tell him what your favorite food is. Bottle flower uh, soup. I said, bottle flower few. I thought it was cauliflower. But bitch, take that C and turn that bitch to a B. They need to get Thug Yoda some more lines because that nigga is hilarious. Every it, He just does it so fucking effortless, okay? And, um, you know, his brother, her brother was helping her and all that stuff and just calling her out on her product and shit. Now, how you selling this and selling that? But, um, you know, back at We Got Y'all, they having a little meeting. 
And, you know, even at the um marathon place, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, so let me go back for a second. When we go through Molly's 30 days, when she was at the restaurant with Quinn, she does, it, Lawrence does see her, okay? She seen him, I think. But, you know, um, no, she don't see Lawrence, but Lawrence did see her. That's who he saw. But then when we see Issa's 30 days, we see that Issa does spot Lawrence when Lawrence do spot him. I mean, spot her when they was at the marathon. So that what took her into a zone when they was talking about what they all doing in life and shit like that. And that what made her blurt out, well, I'm moving, okay? So after that, um, back at We Got Y'all, they having this little meeting. And this is when, you know, Issa and them finally... No, that's not what happened. What happened? What happened? What happened? Oh, the little Spanish kids, Mexican kids, I should say. They're there, you know, getting extra tutoring or whatever because they're not getting help at the school because of Mr. Gaines. So the um boss come in and she was like, what is this? Okay, are you giving out segregated lessons and stuff? This could be a lawsuit. Now, Issa was trying to make up for what was going on with Mr. Gaines. And it's not, I get where she coming from. You know, people thinking that, oh, you might be giving them special privileges or whatever. But they are the one that's being segregated or rest from the other. It's not Issa doing it. Issa just trying to do what she thought was right. So now because of this, Issa basically getting demoted a little bit from her position as, I guess, director of, you know, the program. And then we see at the meeting that Frida gets the, get the, <laughs> she gets the promotion. And then the guy that was there, what's his name, Cal, he was like, Frida, her? And then he was like, I mean, oh my God, really? And they was like, is he about to cry? He was like, I should have got that. And then the girl next to him, I know you should have. I would have gave it to you too. I'm here if you need me. Are you about to cry? He literally was about to cry. I said, get your white privilege ass out of here. Working that white privilege on another white person. Girl, the classism that's going on because I guess he feel like Frida is lower than him. Okay, that's what it felt like. Um, So... You know, she congratulated her and all that stuff and whatever. So, um, Issa is going to be moving in with her brother. Her brother basically said, <laughs> no niggas in the house unless I fuck them first or I'm fucking them. No shoes, no this, no that. She was like, bitch, you ain't even got a fucking um carpet on your floor. What you talking about? Now, when they was having a little yard sale, Eddie pops up like, you know, I'm going to miss you. And then, I'm going to miss you because you're going or whatever. I'm going to miss you because I was using your Wi-Fi. She was like, yeah, I realized it was going a little slow. I was like, Eddie? She was like, but not nah, forever. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you. All right. That's cool. Whatever. Um, This girl asks about the couch, okay? And it's the blue couch that they literally just brought. Her and Lawrence. They, they, only, they didn't even have it for a year yet, okay? And... When Lawrence was getting that call in the car, it was Issa calling him, trying to tell him that she's moving and that she had a few of his things and maybe he want to come and pick it up if he wants the couch also. Bitch, it wouldn't have been me. It, I'm petty like that. And if I'm over you, you ain't get your shit the first round, bitch. And I'm moving or whatever. I'm throwing that shit in the trash. Fuck that. I would have sold that couch too. Or took it back to the fucking shop, you know, and got half price off of that bitch. Something like, uh-uh. It's, it's what's doing too much. Like, I mean, I guess some of y'all would have been like, Ashley, don't do no shit like that. But, you know, they still got feelings for each other. It was an excuse for them to come over there and see each other. That's what it was, okay? Because she honestly didn't have to tell her nothing. If you was completely over, you wouldn't have told that nigga nothing. That nigga blocked your ass on fucking Facebook. Fuck him. All right? But, you know, the feelings is still there. So, of course. Um, <clears throat> you know, so, uh, Amal was bringing her back to the dunes. To get a key to the management to look around the place again. And that's when we saw the little white boys and all that shit up in there. Um, <laughs> she goes into the apartment. And Lawrence is there. And they're talking about stuff. And I said, oh shit. You know, she let her know that. Let him know, you know, she fucked up the place or whatever. When they had that little argument that night. They both talked about that night and apologized for each other's action. But 
they both was like, no, you don't deserve to apologize. It was my fault. It was my fault. They both was taking on the blame for it, which I was like, okay, cool, because both of y'all was wrong in that situation. To be quite honest, Lawrence, it don't matter who the fuck he fucking, she fucking, and bitch, it don't matter who the fuck he fucking, because y'all ain't together no more. And you see, you kind of really did fuck that shit up a little bit, all right? But, um, moving on from that. They start talking and they was having a mature ass conversation that they should have been had in the first place. But you know, when you break up and you're not on good terms or whatever, and if the breakup is fucked up under fucked up circumstances, you're not going to want to sit down and have a mature ass conversation the way that they just did. So of course it's going to play out a little bit until y'all calm the fuck down. And that's what happened. And you know, they watered out and everything. I mean... You know, maybe I should have been there. You know, Issa, I didn't I didn't want to do this and I could have been a better man for you and all this stuff. No, but I could have been there to help you out. I shouldn't have did what I did because what I did was fucked up, okay? It was the worst thing that I had. I said, fuck y'all tears, okay? I'm sorry. I'm fucking sorry y'all did what y'all did. Fuck these tears, bitch. I just was sitting here like, do not fuck on that counter. I got a feeling y'all gonna fuck, but that didn't happen. And I was like, oh, thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I really was just like that. I had a sigh of release. relief. Relief. I said, because remember what happened the last time? He fucked and left. But we don't need that to happen no more. <laughs> Unless y'all finna get back together. And we just need, y'all just need to take a break from one another. Like, apologize, get the closure a little bit, and take a break from one another. And come and find out. Get your life together. And then if y'all want to revisit the relationship revisit it but not now not now okay they hug and Lawrence was about to go out the door he goes out the door he turns back around next thing you know we see Lawrence get on the floor and he's like will you marry me he's like oh my god yes 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 and I said bitch this gotta be a fucking dream and sure enough we see Issa and Lawrence on that same couch in the same fucking small-ass apartment. Let me tell you something. Issa, you have low expectations for yourself because you could not even end your dream sequence. I, I understand the significance of the Dunes apartment, but you mean to tell me you ain't going to upgrade to a bigger, like a two-bedroom or a house or some shit, you know, uh, when you get married. You get married, you come back to the small-ass apartment. You get pregnant, you come back to the small-ass apartment. You get birth and you bring a baby home to this small ass one bedroom apartment. I said, girl, you couldn't even imagine that y'all was in a bigger house. Lawrence out here making money now. Okay? He getting all these sneakers and shit, the expensive ones and shit, you know, big ass TVs and shit. Look like he probably got a new car and shit, bitch. Listen, that's all you can see yourself is, is in that little apartment. <laughs> I said, it's a snap the fuck out of it. She did, because then Lawrence really did turn around and say, bye, Issa. And, you know, it kind of hit her in the gut, but it was what was needed. And then later on in the episode at the end, we saw that she got a friend request from Lawrence. So I guess because they both said, I still love you so much. She said, I still love you so much to him. And he was like, I love you too. And I was like, oh, okay, get out because I don't want nothing to fuck this up. Don't fuck this moment up with sex, okay? You're going to cloud your emotion, cloud your judgment with that shit. Don't do it. So Lawrence, be about your way and Issa, be about yours. You know, we don't know. If she accepted that from request, but hey, that's none of our business. Next thing you know, we see Issa over there at Molly's house. Molly was being a good ass friend in this moment. I will say that. They all wanted to go away. You know, they can't afford, she know her girl can't afford to go with Morocco. My, uh, Molly dealing with this shit with, um, you know, her job. Is she already going back and forth between Chicago and LA as it is? Her workload is heavy, so she can't go out right now. So what we going to do, we're going to bring Morocco to us, all right? They had it all, um, you know, did up. They was dressing up like it. And it was really nice and all that shit. It was cute. Next thing you know, we see Molly getting ready and all this shit. We see her trying on lingerie and everything. I said, bitch, you getting ready for Laurel? It was like, because she was talking about him to Molly. And was like, you know, he different. He's not really what I'm used to. But he is cute. I mean, he is my type. Not necessarily my type, but he's a nice guy. He makes me laugh. He does this. And the way that she was saying it, I already knew it wasn't going to work out. And it almost sounded as if 
that same conversation that she was having with her brother about Lionel when he said, why are you selling with this dude? Okay. You know, you don't really want to be with him and she don't really want to be with Quinn either. And <laughs> sure enough, sure enough. I don't know if y'all thought that um Lorel was going to be at that dog Quinn, but it wasn't him. It was fucking draw. And at that moment in time, I said, fuck you, Molly. Molly just ain't ever, ever going to get right. I said, you know what? You know what, Molly? You do you and let us do us because we just can't sit back and worry about the fuck shit that you do no more. And then Issa go back over there to Daniel. Oh, they ain't done. Okay. She told me some mama sleep on the couch. I said, I thought you was going to sleep with your brother. I mean, well, stay at your brother's house. Molly even asked Issa if she wanted to stay with her. <laughs> Issa said, bitch, I know that shit ain't going to happen. And I feel like if Issa would have stayed with her, Dro wouldn't be in the picture no more. Or at least she'd have to go out to fuck Dro. That would have given her a reason to stay in the house or whatever. I don't know. But <laughs> Molly, Molly, Molly. Molly went back to the fucking therapist and still doing the same fuck shit. That's how she ain't tell him about. She ain't tell her about drugs. But anyway, that was insecure. It was a 45 minute episode. That's why the review was a little bit longer. You guys tell me how you felt about this whole season. What do you feel is going to happen in the season three premiere whole season or whatever? Let's take some time and talk about some predictions. Are you happy with this finale? Did it uh, close up some loose ends or did you want a little bit more? I was cute with it. It was cute for me. I wanted a little bit more, but I'm sat I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. I can wait until season three. But y'all tell me how y'all feel and I will see you guys later this week. Peace.